Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to another Lost Reaction. This is Season 2, Episode 4. It's called Everybody Hates Hugo. I don't. <laughs> right, before I start, I apologise. This is going to be another long intro. Um, Timestamp for the actual reaction there. Okay then, I'm... Um, after last time's episode, I rewatched the Dharma Initiative film. I've written down every bit of information that I could glean from it. Obviously, not all of it is going to be important, but it has raised a lot of questions for me. And a lot of things I'm just, just plain curious about. As you know, I take notes while I'm watching the reaction. I also add to those notes while I'm editing the, uh, the episodes. But someone suggested that I keep a separate sheet specifically for all the questions that come up and all the questions that I have. And I've done that. I sat down one night and made a, a complete list and yeah, there's quite a lot there. First off, how was Locke paralysed? I just want a bit of context. That's all. I just need to know how bad his paralysis was, what caused it, what were the the, the circumstances of it, because I need to know exactly how miraculous his recovery actually was. Also, I wouldn't mind knowing, well, we know it was four years ago, but I would like to know when it happened in relation to Jack's timeline. Because four years ago could be around the time that he was operating on his wife. One person becomes paralysed, another one miraculously is, recovers from what should have been paralysis. A little bit of a parallel going on, those two. And I'm curious about that. What was Kate's original crime? What did she actually do? Again, I need context to justify my opinion of Kate. Why was her mother so scared of her? Like, terrified of her? What is son's father's position? We know he's a baddie, we know he's a gangster or a mobster or something like that. But I want to know details. And I want to know how much of son's father's activities she actually knew about. Again, it gives me context for my opinion of Sun. And it also gives a bit of context to Jin's behaviour as well. Exactly how tight a position was he in. Who are the others? That's a ongoing curiosity. Who are the others? What do the others want with Walt? Is baby Alan now safe from the others did they just want a child or are they still kind of come for Aaron was Ethan Rom one of the others or are there other others and if he's not then who is he or who was he did the Dharma initiative bring polar bears to the island in the film, we saw that the Dharma Initiative was set up as a large-scale communal research compound, which I'm thinking is another name for the island. Yeah, that was using the island as a compound. Uh, and during the bit where it says they were studying what was it, studying psychology, parapsychology, electromagnetism, zoology, and meteorology. And when they said zoology, they showed a picture of polar bears. So did they bring polar bears to the island? It's a more rational explanation than Walt conjuring them from his mind. But neither explanation is definitive at the moment, so... 
I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge on that one yet. Um, where are the Dharma people now? Is there some Michigan laboratory university that is still monitoring the island? Have all the original founders and researchers dead? Is the Dharma Initiative still a thing? Where are the other five parts to the orientation film? Because that one said part three of six. Where are the other five? Uh, how long after the initiative was set up did the incident occur? And what was the incident? Uh, at the moment we've got multiple candidates for that. Were they attacked by the others? Were the others even in existence at that point? Was it an infection? Like they all keep talking about um, a sickness. Was it that? Was it bad luck caused by the numbers that they were using? Or was it smoky? We don't know because he just called it the incident. But then that lab was started to be used as, well, to, to do the countdown thing. That's when the countdown thing started, after the incident. But they did say that the that particular lab was set up before that because it was set up to study the electromagnetic fluctuations that were emanating from that part of the island. So how long had they been monitoring the electromagnetic fluctuations before the incident occurred? And how long had the... Because that was um, uh, Station 3. So how long before had Station 1 and 2 been operating? Are the others part of that experiment into psychology and parapsychology? Which means the others might have special abilities. What was it called? The Swan. That's probably not that important. Um, what do the numbers mean? And how do they affect the outside world? How does Hurley, using those particular numbers in Los Angeles or wherever affect his bad luck how does that work and all the others are there other people in the world that that we don't know about that have experienced this thing with the numbers how widespread is that why only 108 minutes after the incident that um this dr marvin said that after that it was set up as the hitting the button thing every 108 minutes why 108 minutes was there some limit why not set it up for seven hours and let one person get a decent night's sleep you know then one person can man it rather than two or three was there uh, an, another ulterior motive to having two people there because 540 days is yeah, five, why 540 days? That seems a rather arbitrary figure. Why not uh, 324 or 432? It's still a multiple of 108. And once you convert 540 days into months or years or minutes or anything, it doesn't mean anything. 17 months, three weeks. 17 isn't part of the numbers if, if it had some correlation with the numbers we already know about I could understand but it doesn't lastly if Desmond has been resetting the counter every 108 minutes every 1 hour 48 minutes why did he think that Jack or John might have had an infection might have had the sickness Unless that's not what the counter resets. But if it resets Smokey, then why have we had encounters with Smokey? Deadly encounters. What exactly is that counter resetting? Are, 
okay then, that wasn't the last one. Are there any more survivors from the tail section? Now we know Anna Lucia was definitely on that plane. We saw her at the airport. But if she did come from the tail section and I have no reason to disbelieve her, are there any more survivors from the tail section somewhere? And is it possible they got hold of a radio sometime in the last, well, 20 days or so? Could it be that Boone, up in the Nigerian plane trying to radio for help, actually got through to other survivors from the tail section? That would be so ironic, wouldn't it? I actually assume that the voice on the other end of the transmission was just repeating what he said for clarification. But maybe I didn't hear it right. Maybe it wasn't the outside world and it was in fact someone trying to communicate with the outside world as well from the tail section. Wow, that's complicated and ironic and probably actually accurate <laughs> when I think about it. That's sort of the way this show's going. Right, let's get on with this episode. Last week, John and Jack had a bit of a a confrontation. Not entirely sure I understand either point of view, really. I know John is very, very much a believer. Although he can't actually explain what he believes in. He mentioned that it was very hard for him to believe. Which makes me think why he tries so hard to believe. But I suppose... Like I, I said in a previous episode, I suppose when you've been paralysed for four years and suddenly you get, you're in a plane crash and suddenly get the use of your legs again, like immediately with no need for any physiotherapy to um, re-energise his wasted muscles, you're going to want answers. And this... Ireland is not very good at giving answers. So yeah, I, c I can understand where John's coming from. Another thing, I, d I just don't understand Jack's, what Jack's reluctance was to just do what he said. I don't understand why John wanted Jack to do it at that moment. You know, with you know, li literally a couple of minutes on the on the countdown left why he was so adamant just to not push the button himself and then discuss it maybe because as far as i know jack's learnt nothing from that encounter nothing happened they they reset the counter as far as jack's concerned all he did was push a button he's no more no nearer to believing what john wants him to believe than he was before Maybe if they'd let the countdown run down and then experience something and then reset the counter, Jack would believe, but no, I don't think Jack's anywhere near, any nearer to believing. Okay, Michael, Jin and Sawyer still have to get out of the, uh, of the cage. The other, he said... What do they? Who are they? What do they want? To Anna Lucia, but I'm sure Anna Lucia would have been able to answer that herself, since she was on the plane and was in pretty much the same situation. Does that mean they're going to be let go because they're not a threat? Are the others an enemy? Or, as cliched as it may seem. Are they just a friend that they haven't met yet? It could just all be a misunderstanding. But then again, kidnapping a child, kidnapping a pregnant woman, and killing people isn't exactly a welcome mat, is it? So yeah, maybe they are the enemy. 
Okay, I want to go on with this episode now. Every minute I spend down here, there's another minute my boy is still out there. Well, let me break it down for you, Mikey. Right now, Rampina and her buddies are trying to figure out what to do with us. Until they make up their damn mind, there ain't nothing we can do. No. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's getting infected. Why don't you pee on it? They're releasing one of them. Grab the rope. Please. Oh, this is a turn up. Grab the rope. Yeah, ah! grab the rope. You want me, hot lips? Gonna have to come down here and get No, you don't want you. <laughs> yeah. Spill it. Uh spill what? In it. They're uh, all curious. Really. You've been out there an entire day and night, looking at nothing. He doesn't want to let on that there's lots of supplies there. You're gonna lie to me? You're gonna lie to the baby? Dude, look, I never lie. Oh, and the time you told me you were worth 150 million dollars. <laughs> 56 million. I'm sorry. I must confuse it with the 900 trillion I am worth myself. Hey, Rose, we haven't seen you in ages. Thank you. Don't you want to know what happened? What happened? You know out there. Everyone's asking me what's in the hatch. She doesn't care. She's... Your business, honey. Someone actually lived down here? Yep. Uh-huh. Many people. Well, what... What is it for? Uh, it's, it's kind of a long story. Hey, Rose. She's cool. She won't tell anyone. Why are they trying to keep I it a don't secret? I don't know what I would say. Desmond's gone. They've got control of it. No reason not to bring everyone in, in, in there. Or anyone that wants to go, anyway. Oh, no. Bottle's been washed back up again. There's a hope that it might reach somewhere. Throw it back out. So, you know what to do? Inventory all of it and figure out how we make it last. And in the meantime, nobody gets anything. No exceptions. That's your responsibility, early. Okay? Oh, great. Not a good What's person that? to put in control if he's having dreams of. Gorging. Darm Initiative salad dress. Hey, happen to find any shampoo in here? Oh uh, yeah, there's some right over here. Uh, Kate, you, you can't take it. Thanks, Ellie. <sighs> it's just one bottle. It's where it starts. Yeah, it's where it starts. You're right. She just took that. She knew the rules. That's well out of order. This is last night's surveillance day. Oh, helping himself to the chicken. Grace, you owe the company for an eight piece dark meat combo. I didn't need eight pieces. Do you want to watch the whole tape? <laughs> and while you're here, how many times do I got to tell you those napkins cost money? Dude, I quit. Come out now. I saw you back at the rock, and then at the mangrove tree. In fact, I walked in a big circle. Not sure how you didn't realize it. <laughs> All right. You don't have to insult me. And Charlie likes Locke, so he wants answers. Why you've been following me, Charlie? Quite simply, John. 
Everyone's lying. There are a lot of secrets around here. And I'm tired of being at the bloody kids' table. <laughs> I got yeah. Claire's baby back. I didn't go swanning off to the Black Rock on the bloody A-Team mission, but I would have. Someone had asked me. I think I'm entitled to some sodding answers around here. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to know? It's getting dark. We're moving out. Does seem like Anna's in charge here. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. How did she manage to become in charge? Like that guy was trying to actually calm her down a bit. And what happens if we don't push it? We're not going to find out. I'm setting up a system. I'm still working on it, but it looks like it's going to be two person shifts every six hours or so. Shifts? Pushing a button. Oh, and there's a record player. Where you been? He's hey. going to try and scrounge some food for the baby. Around? I know, Hurley. You know what? I know about the food. Locke told me everything. Yeah, well, Locke's lying. Oh, yeah? Is he lying about the button we have to push every 108 minutes or the island will explode? I'm not going to explode. Ah. <laughs> Come on. But Jack put me in charge. Like, I don't even Is want... peanut butter? What? Peanut you, butter? For Nutty, Claire. creamy, staple of children everywhere. How about you give us one? It's for Claire. No yeah. can do, man. You're saying no to a nursing mother? It's not like that. Oh, it's exactly like that. I thought we were friends. You've changed, D man. Divide. Oh dear, it's creating a divide. You are... Well... Well, it's the whole stage playing the Troubadour this weekend, and I was wondering maybe Friday. Okay. I have to work. Oh no, I didn't. I mean... could probably go Saturday. Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> totally cool. One hundred percent. Dude, you've been crushing on this girl for months and doing nothing. Today you're freaking Fabio. Seriously, man, what has gotten into you? Nothing. I just wanted to ask her out before. Before what? <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, of course. This is the last duct. And who's she? I'm Libby. Libby. Michael. How many have you survived? 23 of us. 23. This is station one or something, isn't it? Because I just saw the Dharma Initiative symbol on the wall. I thought you said there were 23 of them. They were. Sickness. Oh, they don't know that. Of course they don't. We thought you should decide what to do. Yeah, oh dear, he's got a hold of dynamite. I couldn't see what it was. He's going to blow the food up. <coughs> he's going to trap. He's going to set a trap. What you got there, Hurley? Dude, somebody won the lottery. Let me tell you something, Rose. We were all fine before we had any potato chips. But now we got these potato chips. Ah, uh, it's a euphemism. Fun. So no, Steve gets an analogy. Charlie's pissed, but he's not pissed at Steve. He's pissed at me. That's the guy. That's the guy. And then it's gonna be, what about us? Well, why, why, did, why did why did I get any potato chips? Come on, help yeah. us out, Hurley. Well, why'd you give Kate the shampoo? And why didn't I get the peanut butter? Then they'll get really mad and start asking, why does Hugo have everything? Why should he get to decide? Then they'll all hate me. That's not the answer though. Let Rose take the burden. Come on, Jack. The inventory's wow, we're the getting time. really into Are you serious? Hugo's head now. Dude, there's enough food in there to feed one guy three meals a day for another three months. We have forty people, it's just not gonna work. Look, you put me in charge, this is what we're doing. Rationing. 
everyone gets one thing that they need or they want. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and Hurley and Charlie are still friends. Right, give me a second. Give me a sec. Okay, so that was a brilliant episode. That was an absolutely brilliant episode. I loved the way we built up the drama and you know we saw that divide happening, that that rupture between of trust in the community. And it had come to a head and then he's the ending just felt so good. It, it just felt like a resolution. Um, it built up the drama and resolved it beautifully and spot on with that. It was great to see Hurley in his initial reaction to winning the lottery. The, the way he was scared of how it how it would change his relationships with with other people with his friends and his family and it reflected perfectly in his task of guarding the food um beautifully handled beautifully written i was enthralled so we now know that survivors of the towel section um and they've somehow found their way to something. Um, it looked like it was a derelict other station of the Dharma Initiative. There was definitely a Dharma symbol on the wall as they went in. And we know that Bernard has survived, which is great news. Once the communities all sort of get back together again. Great news for Rose. 23 survivors, she said. 23 being one of the numbers. Uh, the main body survivors were something like 48, as I remember, and is now down to 42, 43. I'm not entirely sure, but is it trying to get... Is it trying to balance the communities that are on the island into these numbers? Like 42 for the main section. 23, but they've lost some people. So maybe it's trying to get that down to 16. And then maybe there's 23 others or something. Is the kidnapping of Walt anything to do with that? I don't know, but... Yeah, we just had a lot there. And how did Anna Lucia seem to be... Oh my God, maybe they weren't the others. Maybe, oh, I'm, I'm stupid, aren't I? They were all survivors that captured. They weren't the others at all, were they? They haven't got Walt. Oh. Yeah, I thought, I thought, well, we know what I thought. I was wrong. That explains why Anna Lucia seemed to be in charge, because she was leading that party. Um, so there were no others there. That isn't where Walt is. Where does that lead us? Wow, I've got a lot to catch up on. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you hopefully next time. Till then, keep well. Bye-bye. Have a cluckety cluck cluck day, Hugo. <laughs> Early. <laughs>